Well, good morning. Welcome to Glay Morgan Chapel. Thanks for sharing with us uh, in worship today. And uh, we would ask that as you're joining online on Facebook or through social media, uh, through YouTube, we would ask that you would share this video. Uh, we're wanting to push this out and branch this out as much as we can. Um, so click on the like, subscribe to it, and share it so other people can join in with us. Uh, this morning we're going to be uh, sharing in worship with our uh, youth girls. Yeah, um, amazing job as as they are growing in Christ and continuing to worship. And as Pastor Greg shares with us about the Good Samaritan and on love. Yeah, um, it is also Mother's Day today, and so we want to send a special thank you out to our mothers and how grateful uh, we are for them, whether they are a foster mother, a an adoptive mother or a biological mother right. um, or a mother who is someone who doesn't have children of their own but have been a mother uh, to many people in their lives. Great influence on yes. a lot of people. I know I've had many in my life, and I'm sure you have too, Pastor. I have, I have. Charles Spurgeon wrote this. He said, Never could it be possible for any man to estimate what he owes to a godly mother. Mm. That speaks power and truth. It does to how much we, we need to appreciate and how much we owe uh, a woman of Christ and how God's love can carry through uh, them to others and to us and how it impacts our life. Also, be sure to join us on Wednesday nights. Pastor Greg has the book. Red Sea Rules. And uh, you can join us on Zoom if you go to our Facebook page. There's a link there. And we'd love to have you with us in, in this class. This is... Uh, Ten God-given strategies for difficult times. This is a a very pertinent book um, that was written by Robert Morgan a few years back now, but it's still, still very, very uh, up to date with what we're dealing with today. Pastor Ryan's going to pray. All right, let's pray. Make sure that we do uh, also. Don't forget Mondays at seven o'clock the revelation study on zoom as well so we've got yes. a, lot of, a lot of things going on uh brother donnie henry is sharing in that and leading us through that study so let's pray and let's begin our worship father we thank you for another day of life we thank you for all your blessings god you're at work all around us uh, even in through these uh, times of crisis god your hand is is still at work and you're still on the throne and you're in control. I pray as believers and as followers of you, Father, that we look for your hand at work and we come and join you in what you would have us to do for your kingdom. And God, we thank you for mothers today, um, how special they are that you shared in that true gift of a mother uh, in Mary. And as Christ was raised by her and and was loved by her and you chose her god to love your your only begotten son so a mother is precious and a mother is special and god let us never neglect uh, to be thankful and grateful for as charles spurgeon said a godly mother and a mother who loves and god be with our our worship today as the uh, girls are singing in the youth as they lift uh, voices of praise to you may it be honorable and god as we join in with them um, wherever we may be at work driving in our cars um, or even in our own home in the hospitals uh, in the nursing homes wherever we may find ourselves as we're joining in in worship may, we, may our eyes look to you and our voices sing loud in heaven's kingdom just for praise to you and god as pastor greg as he brings the sermon I pray a special blessing that you speak through him and to him as he shares your word uh, about how Christ's love goes deep and how we can enjoy and share that great love to other people. God, let us love our neighbors, and most of all, Father, let us love you and you show us how to love our neighbors. God, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, oh. 
An excellent wife, who can find? For her worth is far above jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. She looks for wool and flax, and works with her hands in delight. She is like merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises also while it is still night, and gives food to her household, and portions to her maids. She considers a field and buys it. From her earnings she plants a vineyard, she girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She senses that her gain is good. Her lamp does not go out at night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hands grasp the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor and stretches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies belts to the tradesmen. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she smiles at the future. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and bless her, her husband also, and he praises her, saying, Many daughters have done nobly, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her the produce of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. I'm thankful for how my mom cares deeply for her children, but also so many other people. I'm thankful for how my mom is always there and gives such great advice, and I'm just thankful for her friendship. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Mom, you are a portrait of God's love. There are not enough words to describe the strength, kindness, beauty, and grace that my mom has displayed in every area of her life. All that my brother and I have that is good is because of my mom's hard work and determination. She is all that I long to be, and I thank God for her today and every day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. I'm thankful for my mom because she is always understanding and never overreacts. She is kind and caring, and I really couldn't have asked for a better mom. Very much, and she. I'm glad God gave me a mother, and I love her very much, and I'm thankful for what she does for me. I love how my mom will hide from my dad and share Reese cups and Cheetos with me right before supper. I love how she laughs with me during the good times, but can pray me right through the bad times too. I'm thankful for the love, the grace, and patience she has shown me and my brother over the years. We are so thankful for you, and hope you know how much you're loved. so so much and I'm glad what she gave me to do and I just love her so so much and I thank you for God to give me a grateful mother to me. I am so thankful for my mother not just on Mother's Day but every day. She is truly my superhero. I love you mom. Happy Mother's Day Grand. We love you and appreciate all you do helping us out with the boys, and here they are. Hi, Grand. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Hi, Grand. Happy Mother's Day. We love you. Hello, Grand. I love you. Hey, Mom. I just wanted to tell you how much we love and appreciate everything you do for us. You sacrifice so much for each and every one of us. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. 
Hey mom, me and Connor just wanted to say happy Mother's Day and we just wanted to thank you for everything that you do for us. We love you. Love you. I love my mommy because she does good cooking and she helps me and encourages me and I love, love, love her so very much. Mom, thank you for always being a godly example for us. You have always shown love and patience to us as your kids, and now you show it to your grandkids. Thank you for all you do. We love you. Hey, this is Fane Lawson. I'd like to wish my mother, Joanne Lawson, a happy Mother's Day on this special day. I've been so blessed to have you as a mom. I think I can speak for the whole family that we love you very much and appreciate everything you do for us. You definitely set the example as to what a mother should be, and I thank you so much for that. I love you, Mom. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day, Day, Mom. We, we love, love you. you. I'm thankful for my mom because she's very strong and always super fun to be around. The older I get, the more that I realize that when God gave me my mom, He also gave me a best friend. There is no doubt in my mind that I would not be who I am today without the person that she is. I love you, Mama. Thank you for being honest and true to the Lord. You're wonderful. Happy Mother's Day. I'm so thankful for a mom who has also been my best friend. She has been the best example of what a godly woman looks like, and I wouldn't trade her for the world. I love you, and Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I can't imagine trying to navigate this life without my mom. Her example has taught me about the kind of person, wife, and mom that I want to be. She has always been my source of comfort and strength, and I hope she knows how much I love and appreciate her. We'd like to wish our mom, Kathy, a happy Mother's Day from her son, Brian, Keisha, Brody, and Jesse, and Josie. We love you and thank you for all you do for us and the kids. Love you. Love you. We love you, Mom. Hope you have a great day. Happy Mother's Day and Nana's Day from me and the twins. We love you so much. I'm thankful for my mother and all the love that she's shown me throughout the years. I'm thankful for Grandma me picturing us cinnamon rolls and all the things she does for us. I love mom's heart of service and how it brings her so much joy to take care of others. Happy Mother's Day, Kathy Bentley. You are such a selfless, loving, caring, God-fearing woman, and we are so blessed to have you in our lives as a mom and friend. I thank God every day for you, and I love you very much. Hey mom, happy Mother's Day. I just wanted to tell you that you mean a lot to me and I'm very thankful to have you in my life. I really don't know what I would do without you and I love you. One of the many things that I love about my mom is not just the love that she has for our family, but also the love and compassion that she has for um, really anyone that she comes across. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love Mommy because she's kind and caring and willing to play outside. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. We just want to say that we love you and that we're so thankful for all your love and support. You are a treasure. I'm so thankful for my mom. She's selfless, compassionate, and full of godly wisdom. I aspire to be at least half as good as mom as her. Love you, mom. My mom is a wonderful example of a godly mother. She displays grace, wisdom, strength, and love, and we are all so blessed to have her in our lives. Mom means a whole lot to me, and I love her so very much. Mom means a whole lot to me, uh, especially because she really helps me get by with school and stuff. So yeah, I love mom a lot. I love my mom because she's always there when I need her. Happy Mother's Day. I love mommy because how nice she is and when she smiles when I tell her something that's funny and how she takes care of me and loves me. Happy Mother's Day. 
What I like about my mom is that she helps me when I have bad dreams and she will always protect me and daddy will too. And the things I like about her is, I mean, the things she does for me is she helps me get dressed in the morning and she helps me eat. She fixes me breakfast. And what the thing I love about her is that she's so good mom. Thank you for being our mother and letting us have Lego messes in the floor. Happy Mother's Day. My mom is very special because she helps us with some things that most parents don't do. Like she takes us on trips and helps us with sports. Happy Mother's Day and I love you. Mommy is my best friend. A big gobble mommy. Mommy, she's my best friend and she's my superhero. I love my mommy because she's kind and nice to me. I'm thankful for my mom because she's so supportive and encouraging. She's always there for me. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mommy because she is, she's the one that gave birth to me. And I'm so thankful for that. My mommy, she cleans the house and like does all of the laundry and gives it to me and so I can put it in my dresser. And I love her. And she uh, cuddles with me at night and we watch a bed I'm so grateful for my mom and the person that she is. She's my biggest role model. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Mommy was really nice dog. What? It was really nice dog. It was really nice of God, wasn't it? I'm thankful for my mom because she is kind, she always puts us first, and she helps us when we need her. Today, I'm gonna to say three reasons why I love my mom. She's sweet, she talks to me nicely, and she's the greatest mom in the world. Happy Mother's Day, you're the most special friend to me in the world, and we love you. We were raised by such a wonderful and godly mom. And she sacrificed so much just so that we would have what we needed and what we wanted in life. And for that, I'm so thankful. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love my mom because she's best and she reads to me. I love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my mom, Mary Ann. My grandmother, Marquita, my sister, Christina, and my wife, Brittany. To all my aunts and cousins who are mothers, happy Mother's Day. I love each and every one of you, and thank you for having such a big role in my life for the good. I would like to say happy Mother's Day to my mother, Marquita Slimp. Thank you for being such a great example of everything a mother should be. We love you.
Well, today the world desperately needs a picture of what God is like. And you and I have a photo album for the world to thumb through. I want to ask you, what are the pictures in your photo album? And where is God in the picture album of your life? I was sitting in English class one day when our professor made this statement that that perplexed me. She said, you cannot define love. And I gave that much thought. I, I simply believe after some thought what she was saying was that there's really not adequate words to describe love. Love was simply more than words. But you know this, you know love when you see it. Love is kind of like a a multi-cut and faceted diamond where the light reflects through it. And when you look at it, it gives you life meaning, purpose, and the beauty of God's life in our picture. And as the eternal nature of God Himself is, the Bible says that God is love. The very fountainhead of love is God. And through my life, I've gotten, I've had glimpses of God's love, and especially through the life of women in my life. I think of my mom, who bandaged scraped knees, delicately prepared hot meals, provided a hot onion poultice when I was congested, and her nurturing strength with the aching broken arches in my feet in the second grade. And at one point in time as a grieving widow who wanted nothing more than to just simply love her children. And I've got the same glimpses of God in my wife, who not only has tenderly cared for me, but she's poured her life and her heart into making a house a home. She's poured out her life as an offering unto the Lord and to our children and to our family, bearing them before the Lord in a closet of prayer, selfless offerings of love. And often hearing her reminder that people matter and things don't, and do for one, she says, what you wished you could do for all. Now, love is not packaged as an abstract illusion, but it's packaged in a multiplicity of practical, heartfelt ways that defy words. I want you to turn with me, and I would encourage you to turn with me to the Gospel of St. Luke. The writer is the physician Luke, who is a meticulous historian. And one of the things when we look at the Gospels, I believe the Gospels as we begin to look at the pictures of Christ, we see the stories. We see the storyline, the familiar line of, of how Jesus walked among people, how He showed us the love of God in the purest, and most powerful ways. And a look at Christ was a look and to see God in the flesh. In Luke chapter 10, verses 25 through 38, these verses come in the context of a religious leader who desired to debate over words rather than to look at a photo album. Or hear a word picture. Christian literature in the New Testament particularly has coined a unique word, agape, to describe the love of God. It expresses that deep, constant, sacrificial obedience to God that seeks the welfare of another and expects nothing in return. It is indeed a selfless giving. That is the way that God loves. So as we look at the scripture together, I want you to see this. One day, an expert in the religious law stood up to test Jesus. 
by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replied, Well, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. Do this, and you will live. Verse 29 is very telling. And it provides the context of the picture that Jesus will paint with words. Verse 29 says that the man wanted to justify his actions, so he asked Jesus these words, Just who is my neighbor? What does loving God look like? Well, these verses tell us that loving God looks a lot like Everything exclusive, exclusively given to God. I want you to look at these verses. He says that we are to love God with all of our heart, all of our passions, desires, all of our motivation. That's our heart. Our soul, including our, our emotions and our will and our mind, he says, with all the mental image. Uh, all the mental energy that you can muster to love God with everything in you exclusively given to Him in all of your strength. Everything within you. That was the Old Testament. Matter of fact, those verses condensed the Shema. Deuteronomy 6, 5, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Leviticus 19, 18 says, do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against a a fellow Israelite, but love your neighbor as yourself. For I am the Lord. Jesus would go on to teach that real love was to not only love those who were your neighbors, but those who were your enemies. Pray for those who despitefully use you, Jesus would say. Now, we we look at this and and we call this um, passion. And we admire this as a quality that, on a, for instance, on a basketball court or on a, on a ball field or in academic, academic pursuits, or when you hear a singer who pours themselves out in a song, they're singing it with great heart, great passion. All of themselves is in, is in that. So that's why there are long practices and passion in playing a game. We say it, we call it this, we say, you know, that, that player just gave it their all. It is an all-in attitude. They were always in all the time. We also admire that in, in marriage, marriage that weathers the storms of life, have this kind of all that is mine is yours attitude. And when the marital vows are exchanged, you're saying that you are that your love and devotion is exclusive for your wife or for your mate. All the other options are off the table. And frankly, no one can know the depth and the satisfaction of real love until it's exclusively given. And given away. You see, loving God is like giving everything exclusively to God, and then I trip over these words all the time. Four times. Four times. Now, this this young religious leader understood this. But I think Jesus is wanting him to pause and perhaps say that you are to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. 
with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and all the time. We get the all. And when you get the all, it should lead us in it. It should have led him as as well as us as to say, "Oh, oh my, oh my. That seems impossible. How is it even possible to love in an exclusive way with everything within you all the time? That was Jesus' point. There's something within all of humanity that is broken. Matter of fact, there's a part within our nature that is dead in trespasses and sins. The reality of this is that this is the high standard, and we're not able to fulfill that within ourselves. And it should prompt something within us, and what it should prompt is humility. Indeed, we are powerless to fully live up to this kind of love. Otherwise, we live our lives in comparison with others and how others are doing and self-justification rather than being justified in Christ. You see, Christ's life empowers new life for living and love. So who is my neighbor? Perhaps he was just wanting a, a debate more than he was to know the reality of what love is. Who is your neighbor? He could have easily said, Jesus could have easily said to him, well, have you not heard what the law says, love your neighbor and, and, and hate your enemy? But I say that you should love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you And in that way, you're acting as true children of your Father in heaven. So Jesus opens up a photo album of love, and he gives us a picture into into a life of this story. This is a parable. This is a story. And Jesus is using this story to open up this man's heart about the assumptions in his life and what he is really loving. So Jesus tells this story. You know this. We know this story as a child, as a children's story often. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. But I want you to know that there's more to this picture that meets the eye. Jesus is wanting to get to this man's very heart of what and who he was loving with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so he opens up his heart, and at least he opens, tries to open up his mind to this story that we look into today. You see, this story is more than just a story that we ought to be kind, even though that's good. Jesus replied, and he he said there was a Jewish man who was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho. And he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes. They beat him and left him half dead beside the road. And by chance, a priest came along, and when he saw this man lying there, he crossed on the other side of the road and passed him by. There was a temple assistant who walked and looked at this man lying there, but he also passed by the other side of the road. And then a despised Samaritan came along. And when he saw the man, he felt compassion on him. And going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil 
and wine and bandaged them. And then he put his, this man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. And if his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you next time when I'm here. Then Jesus asked this question. Now, now which of these three would you say is a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? The man replied, the one who showed mercy. Then Jesus said, yes, now go and do the same. So I want you to look at this story that Jesus gives this man and to us. It's a picture of a man who was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. Jericho was a rich town, a, a trade town that's celebrated by beautiful palm trees and a fertile area. But there was a dangerous and a narrow road on the road to Jericho. It was a narrow way. It was a dangerous way. This certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and there he fell among thieves. They stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and then departed, leaving him half dead. They took him and beat him and stripped all of his clothing off of him, with the exception of his undergarments, and they were leaving him for dead. This man was broken. He had fallen among the thieves, and there they robbed him. Something was broken in his life, and it robbed him. The broken become robbed of purpose, joy, and self dignity. This picture of a broken man is a desperate, is a man who's in a desperate situation. He's stripped of his strength, his dignity, his stamina, his courage, his goods, his clothing. It's all taken away. And he's wounded and beaten down. And there's all kinds of ways to become wounded and beaten down in life, but this man was, Jesus gives us a physical illustration. But there's so many other illustrations that we could use. It's just about anything. It can be broken relationships or broken health. All kinds of things leave us wounded. He was alone and alienated. They left him to die. Half dead. See, when you're broken, you feel like you're the only one in the world. This is what the Jericho Road was for this man in this story. You see, we, we see the pictures that are strewn with pain and heartache, the unexpected things, the unfulfilled longings. All of these may be experiences on the Jericho Road. And they make the lyrics for modern day songs and stories of pain. The Greeks had another term for love. Eros, romantic love, this is the aspect of love that runs one of the greatest risks of heartache and hurt, especially without agape. Without the love of God, without the sacrificial commitment, without the stamina that, in, that allows you to be committed to endure the hardships of life, if it is just mere emotion... You run the risk of being robbed of God's best by trying to fulfill the need for love your own ways in your own life. You see, there's a lot of disappointed people in the world, and the popularity of songs in our culture point to the reality 
of the heart broken. You see, deep down, we know that we are created for more. We, we know intuitively that God has a purpose and He's created us to know love and to be loved, to love to love God, to love our spouse, to love our children, to love our neighbors, and even the empowerment to love our enemies. This is one of the greatest needs in our life, is the need of love. And it is also the highest aspiration and virtue and ethic for living. Our greatest heart need is the need of love. And Paul said, now... There is faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these, he said, is love. So love looks a lot like seeing people as God sees them, created in His image, and yet broken. But we see that God runs to the rescue, leaving the glories of heaven to come to the broken those who are in the trenches of sin and heartache and death spiritually. There was a selfless Savior who comes to the broken. You see, love looks a lot like seeing people as God sees them, created in His image and running, and then running to the rescue with something selfless but love. It looks a lot like empathy. Empathy is the ability to understand and to share the feelings of, of another. So we get the picture, we get the picture and the contrast. There's, there was two religious leaders who, who went to the other side of the road to avoid this man for whatever reason. And then Jesus throws the unexpected. There was a Samaritan. That hit to the heart of someone that was considered not desirable, unloved, even an enemy. And Jesus turns it to say that it was this Samaritan who exhibited the virtue of love and empathy and compassion. You see, empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings with another. But compassion feels that and desires to help. And so it was this Samaritan who came running with mercy to nurture this man, to love him, and to be a force of healing. That's love. Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Affected People, tells a story of getting on a subway one Sunday morning in New York. He said it was a quiet and peaceful ride until there was a man and his four children who, who boarded the subway and he said these children were loud, they were rambunctious, they were disturbing everybody, and the dad was completely oblivious. Covey said that he became irritated to the point that he stepped in and asked the dad to get his kids under control. He said there was this gaze in this guy's eyes, he was broken and he said, oh, I guess I ought to do something about it. We have just returned from the hospital about an hour ago and their mother died. I, I guess I don't know what, what to make of it. And they don't know how to handle it. Covey said there was a shift in the way that he saw the situation. All of a sudden, the irritation vanished and he saw the whole picture. And empathy, care, and mercy was interjected into that situation. You see, love looks a lot like someone serving the broken. 
to care in a very practical way. There was an immediate need. Notice what, he's, what the scripture says, that he poured oil and wine and he, on this man's wounds. And then he put him upon his donkey and he rode him into, a, 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 into the, the little village there and to a place and got him a place of lodging. Jesus said these words. Lord, when, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you do it to the least of these my brethren. You did it to me. Love looks like a costly sacrifice. A lavish grace on a stranger who had nothing to give, nothing to pay. He took his time, his money, the comfort of his own plans and his own situation and his own way. He gave up his prejudices and his prejudgments. And he poured himself out like a drink offering to Christ. A drink offering to the wounds of this man, lavishing a grace on a stranger. This, is, this was costly. It was a step above. It was an extra step. You see, what, what was the question? What The world needs to see a desperately picture of God in our lives. They're desperate for it. It was costly. It was one denarius. It was about the equivalent of one day's wage. You see, a love like this catches you off guard. <laughs> All of a sudden, immediately say, okay, what do you want? You see, a love like this, a picture album of love, Jesus gives it in this, in the parable of this Good Samaritan. It looks a lot like extending mercy that is unearned and undeserved. So Jesus said to this rich or this young religious leader, He said, as you show mercy, you are loving your neighbor as yourself. Now, you know, if, if, if you had wounds and, and you could care for yourself, you would, you would do everything within your power to, to care for yourself. He says, that's the way you should love your neighbor. And then when you love your neighbor like that, you are loving God. You want to give a, the world a, a picture of God? Then love your neighbor as yourself. And love your neighbor like Jesus loved. You see this, in this photo album of the gospel, the gospel of Luke and all of the gospels, we get these pictures that gives us a glimpse into the very nature of God that is selfless, that is giving, that is poured out with such a, a lavished richness. It's poured on the wounds of the broken. Poured with healing. It looks a lot like the mercy that was extended from the cross. Does not the scripture say, For God so loved the world that he gave? 
His one and His only Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. He did not come to condemn the world, but that the world through Him, through Christ, might be saved. Good news for the broken. Good news for peoples whose lives have been robbed by sin. The work of Satan is to kill, steal, and destroy. And Jesus comes that you might have life and abundantly. It looks a lot like the mercy of God that was poured out and lavished on us in the grace of Christ on the cross. It was God's, it was God pouring His love out on us while God the Son was paying the penalty for our sin. And there at the foot of the cross, there is healing and forgiveness. So when you get that mercy, you understand that it is that mercy that you are indeed equipped to extend to your neighbor. So loving your neighbor looks a lot like extending forgiveness. Binding up wounds. It looks a lot like kind words. It looks a lot like patience. It looks a lot like not being rude. It looks a lot like not keeping an account of wrongs. It looks a lot like thinking and hoping and trusting in the best. That's the picture of God's love. It loves others with the love of God. W.A. Criswell, the longtime pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas, was visiting one of his wealthier church members. He was standing there in this beautiful walnut-paneled library, he tells in his story, And he said his eyes were drawn to this oval picture hanging on the wall. It was just a plain picture of an old-fashioned girl. His host recognized that, that the picture caught his eye and he said, That is my mother. Criswell tells that tears began to well up in this man's eyes. He said, You know, I never knew my mom. She died in childbirth after I was born. And someday when I get to heaven, I want to see Jesus who gave his life for me that I could have life eternal. He said, but then I want to see the face of my mother. Yes, I will see the one who gave his life for me. We may have difficulty in defining love, but you sure know what it looks like when you see it. You know what it looks like. There's a multiplicity of pictures and portraits. This world is in the desperate need to see God's love. The lost, broken, need to hear the life-transforming gospel of Christ that His love is for them and His love is for everyone. And it's a truth that needs to be poured out with a compassionate love for the broken. It is a portrait of love that's bigger than words. But you know it. And friend, you know it when you see it. Would you pray with me? 
you may be hearing this and you're thinking, I need to know a love like that. I've never known a love like that. That is the matchless love of Jesus. That's why God sent him and that's why he came. He came that you could know the meaning of love in your life and that your life that is broken may not be perfect but there can be healing and meaning and hope and security he come that you can have life You're listening to this today and it's not by accident. This powerful grace of God can reach you right where you're at. And like this young religious leader, it would have been so wonderful if the story had ended that this man said, I see my need. I'm broken. We don't get that picture. You don't have to compare yourself with anybody. Just look to Christ. Trust Him as Savior and Lord. You can do that today right where you're at. For others of you who are hearing this, you're saying, well, I need to love like that. And that's what I say for myself. And I'm saying, Lord, I am broken and unable to love, even love you with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. So I ask Christ to enable me to love as He loved, to see with His eyes, to love the broken with all my heart. You see, you know love when you see it. Father, I thank you for the dear ones who are listening this morning. And I simply ask, Lord Jesus, that one has been thinking about a relationship with you I pray that you'd give them the the gentle assurance to do what they know in their heart that they need to do and that is trust you as Savior and Lord give them this morning the grace and the faith to say yes to Christ and then Lord give us all the empowerment To live a life of love. To care. More than just words. But may it be the practical working of our lives and our hearts. Because this world is in a desperate need. To see you, Lord. May when they flip through the photo album of our lives, they see you in every single picture. It is in the name of Christ I pray.